The book opens in 1485, the day after the Battle of Bosworth, when Henry Tudor has just taken the throne of England from the ruling family, the Plantagenets. Our heroine is Elizabeth, Princess of York, who is of the Plantagenet house. So these two, who are basically enemies, are forced to marry each other. It's an arranged marriage, and uh, the peace of England depends upon the young princess marrying this young pretender and uh, them trying to forge a united country and a united monarchy. I think the character of Princess Elizabeth of York is particularly interesting because she's in love with someone else when she has to marry the man who is really her enemy. And then she has to work out how she is going to grow in affection and loyalty towards him, how she's going to bear the real awfulness of her mother-in-law, how she's going to manage the constant rebelliousness of her own mother and the knowledge that her own royal family are continuing to conspire against the man who is now her husband. The psychology of Henry VII is an interesting one, but I think the way I describe it in the novel is probably right, that what we see is a man who comes to the throne, who only wins the throne relatively late in life. He's in his 30s when he does his final and successful attempt on the English throne, but he's, he's lived his life in exile. One of the interesting backstories which I've explored in the novel, which still not many people know about, is that at the time there was a very powerful belief that Richard III and his niece, Elizabeth, Princess of York, were lovers. And there's a document which went missing in about the 15th, 16th century, in which she seems to be writing to the Duke of Norfolk to ask him if he will help her marry the, the King Richard, King Richard III. His wife Anne was dead by this time, and you can see that dynastically it would work very, very well for a Princess of York to marry. He's her uncle, but they would be able to get dispensation. So politically it made sense, and there's also a very strong suggestion that they were in love and that they may have been lovers. Of course, that means that the Battle of Bosworth is even more poignant for Elizabeth, the White Princess, than it is for anyone else. It's not just the fate of England that's sealed on that day. It's whether she can marry the man she loves or the man that she probably regarded as her enemy.